In this video, we will study about epilepsy. Epilepsy is a disorder which occurs due to one or more chronic conditions of the body in which there occurs disturbed nerve cell activity in the brain. This leads to recurrent seizures in the person. It occurs due to one or more chronic conditions like the brain injury after a road traffic accident which leads to disturbed nerve cell activity and uncontrolled nerve activity in the brain. It is important to differentiate between the words epilepsy and seizure. Epilepsy is a condition which occurs due to excessive and uncontrolled neuronal activity in the brain. This uncontrolled neuronal activity can be generalized or it can be localized to one area of the brain. For example, it can be localized to just the area of the brain which perceives the touch sensations of the body or it can be localized to the area which controls the motor function of the body. It can also be localized to one of the areas like the visual and the auditory perception areas. Now, The result of the excessive neuronal discharge in one of these areas is called a seizure and the type of the seizure will depend upon the area of the brain that is affected. Now let's talk about the mechanism of seizure development. Normally there exists a balance between the excitation and inhibition of neurons in the central nervous system including the brain and all the neuronal pathways. This is maintained by chemicals like acetylcholine and GABA. Seizures develop when a group of neurons in the brain becomes hyper excitable. Now this usually happens in two phases. The first phase is called the initiation phase in which some neurons due to some reason become hyper excited and start to have excessive neuronal discharges. One of the most important reason is decreased sodium levels of the body called hyponatremia. The second phase is called the propagation phase. Now normally the neurons which have neuronal discharges are surrounded by a zone of inhibitory neurons called the zone of hyperpolarization. This zone of hyperpolarization prevents the spread of excessive neuronal discharges to other parts of the brain. But due to some abnormality in the brain like decreased sodium levels of the body, the zone of hyperpolarization gets depolarized and the spread of neurons can occur to the other parts of the brain. So this is how the seizure propagates to other parts of the brain after it has been initiated in one region of the brain. One important term to understand here is epileptogenesis. In the mechanism of seizure development, we took the example of decreased sodium levels in the body called hyponatremia. But the initiating event for the seizure can be a more permanent type of injury called brain injury due to road traffic accidents. In this type of brain injury, the neuronal networks become chronically hyperexcitable that there is a permanent change in the neuronal networks which results in spontaneous seizures in the person. Now, this process in which a normal neuronal network is converted into a permanent chronic hyperexcitable one is called epileptogenesis. Now let's talk about the various types and classification of seizures and epilepsy. Seizures are broadly defined into two categories, the generalized and the focal seizures. The generalized seizures usually start at one place in the brain and then due to widespread neuronal networks, they spread to whole of the cerebral cortex. So the main characteristic of generalized seizures is their spread of the seizure. One of the main important structures that helps in the spread is the corpus callosum which connects both the hemispheres and due to this, the seizure spreads to the other hemisphere of the brain. In comparison, the focal seizures are confined to one area of the brain where they originate, which is usually one hemisphere or a small part of one hemisphere. Now let's talk about generalized seizures in a bit detail. Generalized seizures are of many types and one of the most common type of generalized seizures is the generalized tonic-clonic seizures. In generalized tonic-clonic seizures, there is widespread and uncontrolled neuronal activity in whole of the cerebral cortex. And generalized tonic-clonic seizures happen in almost 10% of the patients with epilepsy. As I mentioned, generalized tonic-clonic seizures involve whole of the cerebral cortex and there is excessive neuronal discharge in the motor nerves through the brain. Due to this excessive neuronal discharge in the motor nerves, the muscles of the body get contracted without any relaxation. This is called the tonic phase of the generalized tonic-clonic seizure in which the muscles remain totally contracted. 
Also, there is loss of consciousness in the patient and tonic phase is characterized by many other symptoms and one of them is the ictal cry, which is a typical sound produced by the tonic contractions of the muscles of larynx and expiration. One another characteristic of the tonic phase is the impairment of the respiratory drive which causes the cyanosis in the patient. There is also tonic contractions of the muscles of the jaw due to which tongue bites can occur. In addition to the increased motor activity in the nerves, there is also increased sympathetic discharge from the brain which causes increased heart rate and blood pressure. The tonic phase usually lasts for 10 to 20 seconds and then it transforms into the clonic phase. In the clonic phase, the continuous discharge from the brain gets interrupted by small durations of relaxation. This occurs because the inhibitory mechanisms of the brain come into play and try to control the widespread neuronal activity. Due to this, there occur alternate muscle relaxations and contractions which cause spasm and jerking and this is perceived as violent shaking of muscles. The clonic phase usually lasts for only one minute and then it transforms into the post-ictal phase. The post-ictal phase is characterized by confusion, unresponsiveness and muscular flaccidity in the patient. The patient usually remains in the post-ictal phase for one or two hours after which he gradually transforms into the normal state. There are other types of generalized seizures as well like the generalized tonic and the generalized clonic seizures. These type of seizures are characterized by symptoms of only the tonic and clonic phase respectively without transforming into another states. One another type of generalized seizure is called the generalized absence seizure. This is very important as it is the most common type of seizure in the children and it is considered due to a genetic abnormality in the children. Generalized absence seizures are characterized by sudden and brief loss of consciousness in the patients without loss of muscle tone. These seizures usually last only for seconds and there is usually no post-ictal confusion. Other type of generalized seizures include atonic seizures and myoclonic seizures. Now let's talk about the focal seizures. Like we just discussed, focal seizures usually remain confined to a particular area in the brain. So the symptoms of the focal seizures depend upon the site of the brain that is involved and also the spread of the seizure. If the seizure activity remains confined to the motor area of the brain, the symptoms that are produced are usually the muscle jerking in one area of the body. Some patients also exhibit turning of head to the one side. If focal seizures occur in the visual cortex of the brain, the symptoms are usually flashes of light which are only perceived by the patient. And similarly, if the focal seizures occur in the auditory cortex of the brain, the patient perceives ringing sounds in the ear. And if the seizure activity occurs in the sensory area of the brain, it is perceived as sensations of false touch by the patient. Focal seizures can also be differentiated into two types, that is focal seizures without discognitive features and focal seizures with discognitive features. The discognitive features mainly involve the impairment of consciousness. So in the first category, the patient usually does not have any impairment of consciousness and it is fully conscious even during the seizure. He is able to interact normally with the surroundings. These type of seizures were previously classified as simple partial seizures. In the second type of seizures, that is with discognitive features, the patient exhibits marked impairment of consciousness but not loss of consciousness. The patient appears to be awake but does not interact or answers anyone's questions. These type of seizures were previously classified as complex partial seizures. Now let's talk about the etiology or the cause of seizures and epilepsy. You can easily remember all the causes of epilepsy by remembering a simple mnemonic vitamins D. In this mnemonic, V stands for all the vascular causes that are associated with the blood supply of the brain. These include stroke, bleeding and AV malformations like Berry's aneurysm. I stands for infection and the infections which mainly cause epilepsy are the meningitis and brain abscesses. Trauma is one of the leading causes of epilepsy in both young and adult patients. Road traffic accidents and penetrating injuries of the brain come under this section. 
Epilepsy can also be a result of autoimmune diseases like CNS vasculitis and systemic lupus erythematosus. Various metabolic disorders are a very very common cause of epilepsy and seizures. They include hypoglycemia, hyponatremia and many other metabolic disorders. Some epilepsy conditions do not have any cause or the cause is unknown that are considered to be idiopathic epilepsies. N stands for neoplasms which includes all the space occupying lesions of CNS and brain. From S you can remember all the psychiatric disorders which lead to epilepsies. And D is a very important category that is drugs. Drugs are a very important cause of epilepsy and common drugs which cause seizures include alcohol, phencyclidine and cocaine. So this was all about the mechanism, classification and etiology of epilepsy. In the next video in the series we will discuss about the treatment and diagnosis of epilepsy. Follow us on Facebook for all the latest flashcards and upcoming stuff. If you want to connect to me in a better way, follow me on Instagram at Lost in the Norths where I share my travel and landscape photography. Thank you so much for watching this video.